ります。Uh, good evening, everyone. This is the Town Council special meeting. It's a public hearing. It's Wednesday, June 29th, 2022. It is 7.05 p.m. We're in the boardroom here at McCannon Town Hall. Uh, you can zoom in. There's a Zoom link found on the town website. So you can zoom in and participate via Zoom or join us here at Town Hall. Uh, with that, we will take roll. So uh, we're ready. Mark. Robin Bates Mason. Here. Rita Bettino. Here. Tom Butterworth. Here. Mark Jimski. Here. Steve Carl. Here. Luke Kaufman. Here. Mike Morrow. Here. Maria Naughton. Here. Kimberly Norton. Here. Hilary Ormond. Here. Christina Ross. Here. Penny Young. Okay. Absent. Thank you, Mark. I know we may not have to do that for a public hearing. I just want to make sure everybody's here with Zoom and everything. So right now we are going to solicit input from the public on the agenda topic, which is the New Canaan Playhouse. Uh, any members of the public present that would like to speak, please raise your hand. Come forward. Come on up. Um, There's, I think you should read the uh, public hearing notice first. Okay. Public hearing notice. Uh, this will be a hybrid meeting. Those wishing to participate in the meeting will attend in person or connect on Zoom web-based conferencing tool on their computers, tablets, or phone as follows. The, the link again is on the website. Here is the, when do I have that? I don't know if you need to read all that, but you probably need to read Just this. To consider your public comment. Oh, there, okay. got it, got it. Okay, sorry. All right. Uh, <laughs> We are to consider hearing public comment and upon take action of the proposal to lease the building known as the Playhouse located at 89 Elm Street, New Canaan to the Playhouse LLC. The public hearing is intended to meet the public hearing requirement of Connecticut statutes, section 7-163E. All right, with that, now we will hear members of the public. Come on up. And there's a uh, microphone here at the table. Tucker, you'd prefer this chair here? Either one? Yeah, right. This one right here. Yeah, we'll And just introduce yourself and we need to, or your address and your name. Thank you. My name is Michael Cavino. I live at 209 Indian Rock Road in New Canaan. For, I've been a New Canaan resident for about 23 years. Um, and uh, and uh, I also have two daughters that uh, live in town, uh, the Erhan family. And uh, <clears throat> live over at Stonely. No, not Stonely. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm supposed to know this. 96. Overall for Marion. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and also uh, my other daughter is about to get married. She just bought a condo in town. So all three families are ecstatic about this uh, this development. Uh, my my family has some interest in films and, and things. They're in the entertainment business and. And uh, my son, who is a director and a writer, also wanted me. He called me when he found out about it to uh, he uh, to offer his his uh, uh, support and approval. He was a graduate of New Canaan High School, and and um, we I, we're just ecstatic. And we've done a little bit of a deep dive into the, the team that's coming on to take over the theater, uh, Cinelab, I think is it's called, and. Uh, find them to be a great bunch of guys who are very reputable and, and uh, really have an interest in the art component of it. And I think that's exactly what, you know, the town needed. Um, you know, when we came to New Canaan, uh, I, I, I came from a town that didn't have a movie theater, didn't have a train station. And those were two things in having a place in New York City. I wanted a train station and I wanted a place where the kids could be safe and walk in. I wanted a town. And, 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 and I came when they were young. My oldest was, I think, in eighth grade. And I, I was very sad to see the movie theater close and was very concerned uh, about uh, what, what it was going to happen. And, and sometimes, you know, sometimes you want to do things and you just don't get around to it. But you guys <clears throat> did it. I mean, it, it, this is exactly, exactly what is wanted and needed. And very rarely does that happen in life. Okay. but uh, I hope I wish him a lot of success we intend to support it many of the people that I've talked to are um, 
you know, friends that live in town or intend to support it. And um, I just want to say, well done. You know, I, I, I hope that it gets approved and that you guys go through with it. And it's going to be a tremendous asset to the town, I believe. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Anyone else want to speak in or against comments from the public in the room? Anybody? Is there any way online you can see what the blueprints of what the proposal is going to be? You want to come up and ask a question or that's, that's a good question. Just introduce yourself. Uh, hi, my name is Jeff Marvin. I live on Laurel Road, New Canaan. I'm also a filmmaker. Um, I've been to the theater, the new theater in Bedford that was just built, and I've been to the one in Ridgefield, uh, which I think are, you know, both excellent uh, facilities. Um, like the gentleman before, I was very uh, concerned that the theater might close, I considered sort of the heartbeat of the center of town. Uh, likewise, I was living in Westchester. I moved up here because I specifically wanted a town to live in. Um, I've been here 20 years. Um, I just wanted to know if there's any way of seeing what, what they're proposing in terms of blueprints and scale. I, I just read online yesterday and saw that the meeting was today. And I was very, very glad that I could at least come and you know hear what hear what was going on. Uh, but I have no idea really what's uh, what's been proposed, and what the budget is. And I, I saw a line that they're going to have you know obviously this this I don't know if it's going to be one theater or two theaters. Um, what kind of uh, said the upper part of the building is going to be uh, members only hall? I was hoping that maybe somebody from the organization that was proposing to build the thing. Uh, would be here to sort of present what their cases. Maybe that happened two days ago. Yeah, so just to, get, just to get you up to speed. So our, all of our meetings like tonight it will be televised and we actually put them up online so you can actually access all of those little meetings. So you can go back and watch, you know, all the discussions about it leading up to tonight um, to get up to speed. But, you know, we can we can fill you in briefly on, on the plans that Kevin's here tonight and you can give, give you a quick overview if you want, Kevin. You want sure, to Jeff. So, you know, we searched for an operator all of last year, and then Cinema Lab came along and found us in September. Uh, they are in the business of uh, opening their closed theaters. They have one down in South Orange, New Jersey already. They have one they're working on in Radley Beach, New Jersey. And they have one out in Colorado. So their their business model is to find closed theaters and, and reopen them. So, you know, perfect match for us. They're exciting people. They're young. They are, Luke Parker Bowles is the CEO. Uh, and... Uh, uh, his history is is in the movie business, and he's got uh, I forget the name of the uh, uh, Patrick Wilson is a uh, critically acclaimed actor. He's one of the, so they have a group of, of management. It's kind of a, a bit of a um, collection of people rather than a you know a formal company, but they're they're working together. So anyway, um, the town has to do some re remediation to the building because we've owned it for 15 years. We never did any of the work to bring it up to code in terms of uh, ADA compliance, that type of thing. We have to re-engineer the, the slope of the floors. We have to eliminate the, the steps when you come out of the theater in an emergency. You know, you, that doesn't work today. So we um, it will be two, twin th two, two cinemas. Um, currently, there's 150 seats on each side. They're going to cut that down to about 80 on each side. There'll be a... Um, not the big kind of seats you fall asleep in, but they're buying these really nifty seats in Europe. That um, so it's going to be an upscale experience. I mean, you saw the Prospector in, in Ridgefield and Bedford. You know, we, we look to keep the history of the, the theater. Will be a playhouse. Will be a hundred years old next year. So we hope to open it on, on April first or thereabouts to celebrate the the hundredth year anniversary. And it's going to be respectful of the history of the building, but it's going to be totally modernized. The second floor will be used, you know, when you call private club, it'll be used for event space. I mean, if people want to rent, rent it for parties or, um, so that is quite, not quite fully defined as to how they're going to use it. Because movie companies these days take 65% of the revenue, the ticket sales, you have to find alternative revenues. You can't make it on just, you know, popcorn and Coke. And so they, um, they will sell alcohol like most uh, movie venues are today. They will have snacks. Um, and, uh, so it's, it's, you know, they, they, they really want to make it an experience. Like when you go to the prospector or, or Bedford. So, so it's a for-profit business. Oh, it's a for-profit. We're just a landlord. We own the building. We're going to have to put about 
two point two million. They're putting one point five. So um, it's uh, not really a joint venture because they want to, they're going to sign a 10 year lease with two five year options. So they're going to look to recoup their uh, investment over the long term. And, um, you know, I think it's going to be a great relationship. So that's kind of the outline. Um, Is there any plans on, on their agenda, their programming agenda? Uh, in first, run, first run movies primarily, okay. uh, but they want to have some alternative content with independent films. Um, but, you know, they need to make money and first run movies is where you make money. You know, Bedford and, and Avon and Stanford and have a little bit of a different business model, but even Bedford has to do first run movies somewhat to make, make money. Otherwise it becomes a charity operation. This is not, a, this is a commercial operator. Is there any way, is there any talk of tying it into the high school? What, what if they have like a theater program or anything like that? Well, we did have discussion and in the lease, it says they can do live performances and that kind of thing. It doesn't really lend itself to a stage um, kind of theatrical type use, but they will occasionally have um, uh, perhaps uh, if they can get a director to come with a new movie and you know have it like they do down at the Avon. So they they are very open to things that are you know somewhat alternative as well. Um, you know when I was when I was hunt, uh, sort of uh, fishing around for the high school thing, I thought maybe there was like a film program where they could they could program a film night out of a whole week where the students can show, <clears throat> showcase their films or something like that. Also, the one in Ridgefield, it, it seems to be uh, hooked up with a uh, handicapped. Uh, yes, they, they have they have a sponsor who put, I think they put $30 million into, run, into building that theater out that's got five screens. I think they have 45 employees um, and it's, it's and it has a restaurant. Um, it's designed to provide employment to uh, handicapped individuals um and the sponsor is really has a sister or an i think a sister that's handicapped that's why she has the interest in doing it right and uh you know our our budget compared to that is modest but it's going to be you know one of the uh, 100 year old playhouse and uh and you know we also are lucky these days you know darian wilton and uh, westport don't have downtown movie theaters so your choices are to go to bedford uh, or prospector or go down into the big boxes in Stanford and Norwalk. So this is going to be a nice alternative for people to come and have dinner and go to a movie or have a, go to a movie and have dinner. So, was, and so we look to be a great complement to our restaurant business. And I do have a couple of uh, yeah, representatives. Jeff, we've, got to, we've got to, yeah, we've got to go. Uh... We have a couple of representatives um, from cinema lab. Luke Parker Bowles is on, uh, Brandon Jones is on. And um, Luke, do you want to just address any of that? Yes, I'd love to. Um, thank you very much for, for your comments. Um, with respect to schools that, you know, we are looking at every opportunity to partner with um, as many of, uh, of the institutions in UK as we can. We've already started thinking about doing a book club evening um, at um, on the, the top floor uh, of the Playhouse, where in partnership with the library, so that you read your book, they can have a, the group can have a chat about it, and then we can show the original movie upon uh, which the book was based. Uh, but we, we're very, very, as, as we've done in our other uh, theatres, we're very, very keen on finding educational opportunities, um, doing talks from, you know, it, all too often it's the actors who get the... Uh, attention but we believe that the cinematographers that the production designers that the sound editors the sound mixers are fascinating so we'd be looking to do programs with the schools for for those doing programs in film who are interested in that area um we're also looking to provide opportunities if if the church any of the churches need it for for whatever it may be so so that's really in our mind the, the community outreach is a huge huge part of this um and i'd love to continue a conversation with you about this uh, with respect to schools but um we believe that all ships rise when you listen and absorb the community uh, we don't pretend to know new canaan uh completely and nor should we so I think we're going to learn this together. Um, certainly the first one is a big part of it, but also in the alternative programming, you know, we're, we're all ears. Um, so that's, I hope that's helpful. But thank you for your very uh, 
pertinent and and, and thoughtful question. Well, I have only one, one more question. Yeah. Uh, as far as the, the out out the exterior facade, are you going to keep that sort of charming yes. kind of look to yeah. it? Yes, we've hired an arch pre uh, preservation architect who really is respectful of the history of the building. The outside won't change much at all. And and we we are really going to lean into that. You know, um, every element that's original. Um, we really that that's really important to us and because it should feel it should feel like it's meant to be we're not there to to bow tie it we're not there god god bless them uh we're there to to make it a natural blend with the town um which is what it should be so all right thank, well, you. thank you thank you for answering my questions jeff thank you for coming out really okay. appreciate the input right. thank, thank you all. thank you very much great idea on the school tie-in that's really good great. Anyone else want to? I'd like to say. Sure, absolutely. Just come up and introduce yourself. And I will. Let us know where you live. Hi, my name is Howard Davidson. I live adjacent over in Norwalk. My daughter went to New Canaan High School and her mom, and what, well, mom just passed away, but she's a property owner here in town. Uh, I spent my entire working career in the entertainment business. I'm a local and stagehand. I've worked on Broadway. I spent over 20 years at the Metropolitan Opera House. <clears throat> and uh, the things this gentleman was saying, was just saying we're good. In eighth grade, I walked into the backstage of my high school. And you have a very nice theater here, by the way, in the school, I've helped there. And uh, I never left the theater. And I had a guidance counselor come up to me one time and say, <clears throat> this is in high school, say, gee, I wish we had more for you. Uh, I picked my career destination as a child and anything you can do to help the people in your town who have children that are interested in the theater, it's a good life. I had a good life. I have a good life. And uh, whatever, tie in the school productions or, or whatever, anything you can do, you'll help those kids <clears throat> because not everybody's going to be a lawyer or a doctor or a stockbroker. And I think our new economy shows that. There are kids that really should have gone to auto school or auto shop or whatever. And uh, what I've heard here sounds good. I like it. I, I don't want to see that theater go away. Your town is a beautiful little town. I've been here and around it for the last 25 years. Uh, keep the facade of the theater. <laughs> that old quaint little sign really means something. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. And we have Tom Brown online. Yep. How are you, Tom? Hi, how are you? Good. Um, can you unmute the camera as well? Or is that, uh, can you un... Uh, hang on, uh, hang on. Let me, where are you? You just moved on me, hold on. Sorry, I know in this age of technology. There you should be good now. You're too go. pretty, Tom, you're just too pretty. There he is. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Brown. I live on Mill Road uh, here in New Canaan with my wife and two children that go to e-school. Uh, we moved here about a year ago, but our family has had ties to New Canaan for the past 20 years. Um, let me just first start by saying that uh, I love movies. Um, I always have, uh, so much so that I have chosen to work in the TV and film industry for the past 25 years. Uh, the idea of having a first run movie theater and other curated programming in the heart of our town is, is a very, very exciting prospect. Uh, I believe for all residents, young and old, uh, especially in the historic gem that is the Playhouse, uh, it has the potential to be the model for cinema for years to come. So uh, this opportunity should definitely not be squandered. And I have to tell you, I have a few concerns. Um, I'm concerned about Cinema Lab being awarded the opportunity and not having the ability to follow through with it. Uh, this has happened with several of their other projects uh, that they've been involved with, and they have, in a way, overpromised and underdelivered certain aspects. Uh, examples of this is in Maplewood, New Jersey. Uh, they were applying for a necessary liquor license, uh, and it was not approved, so they had to withdraw from the project. The other one that was mentioned earlier was Bradley Beach, New Jersey. Uh, it was sold to the community as a full gut renovation with a grand opening on Memorial Day in 2022. Uh, this did not happen and construction as far as I know is yet to begin. And they have a current shortfall of over a million dollars according to their own website. 
So um, the principals involved in Cinema Lab, none of which are New Canaan residents, they do have a wide breadth of experience in film. Um, however, I trust that the council's decision is going to be made based on not on Hollywood glitz and recognizable British surnames, but that they can actually uh, execute or be held accountable for this. Um, I'm also concerned that the funds raised here from New Canaanites in New Canaan will go towards uh, other projects in the Cinema Lab portfolio uh, and not uh, instead of the Playhouse. And I'd love to know how we're going to safeguard against that when they've got other theaters that are in similar situations as this. Um, lastly, I will say I'm concerned about the types of curated programming uh, outside of first run films um, you know, the local community should be uh, consulted as to other programming options. And I believe that a volunteer group should be established with local members that contribute ideas, especially since none of the Cinema Lab principals live in the New Canaan community. So even though it's a private business, the town owns a facility, so there should be some say and oversight. Um, I truly believe the Playhouse is a jewel located at the heart of town. It will be a huge feather in the cap for Cinema Lab if they get it, but the town must hold them to task and deadlines must be in place. If they're going to renovate and move forward, there has to be a timeline and they have to greet that. Um, it cannot go the way of others. And I appreciate what Cinema Lab has put together. A 10 year lease is a very long time. I know that you have to do that in order to make money and have commitments, but especially in a volatile industry such as this, um, you know, it's a long time. The industry changes almost, almost <laughs> weekly. I highly recommend a further vetting of Cinema Lab, their financing timeline and partners across their theaters. And if it doesn't pass the smell test, then I believe that the council should make it. Um, and if not, then cast a wider net for suitors. I just wanna say, I'm excited that this happens, okay, if Cinema Lab gets approved, but they have to be held to task and they have to deliver on what they promise, so. Thank you, Sam. Thank Appreciate you. It. Tucker, anybody else out there? Um, is, if there's anybody else online that would like to speak, let us know. See anybody. Else. Okay. We are ending right, almost right on time. It's 727. So we need a motion to, is that everybody? Yeah. Okay. So we need a motion to adjourn the public input. And let everybody know that the regular meeting will and start. And the regular meeting will start in a couple of minutes. We're going to start it as as quickly as we can at 730. So motion, Tom, second. Rita, all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. And anybody...